if you take the wrong people, remember you travel at the speed of the slowest, of the fattest. So you need to make sure your worst person is better than every other section's worst person. That's how you win. That's simple mathematics. Hey team, how we going? It is Kaz from In The Trenches with Kaz and today we are doing a reaction to a reaction. An Australian grunt doing a reaction to a US Marine from Combat Arms Channel who is doing a reaction to the Duke of Gloucester Cup, the premier infantry competition that dedicates the best of each battalion against each other for the competition to prove which is the best battalion. No more said, let's get on with it. And let's see what the Marines got to say. And I'll answer the questions he can't answer. Why? Because this guy has done the Duke of Gloucester Cup. Hardest I've ever worked in my life. Other than marriage, of course. All right, y'all. Welcome back to Commodore Arms Channel. All right, so today we're checking out something from the Australian Army. And this is the Duke of Gloucester Cup. Now, I'm not... First of all, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. But That's today right. we're checking out an infantry competition in the Royal Australian Regiment. So I guess seven sections were competing to kind of be the best section infantry section in the royal australian regiment and it looks like from there um they moved on to the Cam cambrian patrol cambrian, cambrian patrol, patrol yep um which is over in the uk which is kind of cool for them to actually like travel you know I the irony of this is the hard work that you have to do to even be selected to go on to the duke of gloucester cup in australia which pits seven sections against each other from seven battalions to who's the best if you win you're going to feel like a dead man walking and then you've won your passport, had your ticket checked to now go to the Cambrian Patrol over in England and do it all again against international armies. Holy shit, it's like punishing those that achieved. Here we go. It's all about the honour. Who dares wins? Not quite. That'd be a Sandy Beret. I was like the, the next sort of tier. But yeah, I did something similar to this when I was in the Marine Corps. I was the <coughs> squad leader for our division squad competition, like the best squad competition. And uh, yeah, it was a, uh, it was, it was brutal. It was a doozy. Like the first day, I lost like my fingernail on, I think my index finger, which is a uh, pretty annoying for doing anything at that point, especially when you're out in the woods for a week. But uh, yeah, I imagine it's gonna be pretty tough, pretty brutal. But yeah, so. Uh so this guy smashed his fingernail off on his trigger finger. That would have sucked. He would have felt his pulse in that. I've done it on my middle finger, but I had no girls to please, so I was A-OK. -okay. Week-long kind of thing, so it's tolerable, but it's definitely still annoying, but it should be cool. Let's check it out. So the Duke of Gloucester Cup, also known as the Gloucester? Dog Cup, Gloucester? is the Australian Army's preeminent <laughs> section level competition oh gosh, that okay. we run every year here at the School of Infantry. It okay, is an annual opportunity thing? for us here at the school to provide a framework for the RAR battalions to send their sections and to be tested across the entire suite of skills required to be an infantry soldier in today's modern army. Interesting. So his beret, I'm kind of just focusing on the beret at this point. They have the beret flash like right in the kind of middle of their beret. And I've never seen a beret shaped like that. So it was kind of interesting to see how all, all the different countries shape it. So yeah, like he's saying, it sounds very similar to our squad competition where we got kind of tested on a bunch of different things. Physical fitness, of course, doing like crazy movements. Our communications knowledge, our weapons knowledge, um, like obstacle courses and stuff, land navigation. So yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much all encompassing. So you really need to be on your game because if you're if you're deficient on something, then it's going to be super brutal and it's going to make everything so much harder. Because it's not just like one thing, and you you're, you're kind of done with that. It's like yeah, there's going to be events where you're doing like land navigation, you know, physical fitness, all this other stuff at, at the same time. So it's mentally taxing at the same time. Uh the Duke of Gloucester Cup, the Dog Cup, has also got several organic competitions inside it. So you can win multiple trophies for your battalion, bragging rights to go home with you, where you become the inaugural winner of that until the next Duke of Gloucester Cup. And one of the interesting things about the location is this is actually conducted at the School of Infantry while regular training is happening for the IETs. So they're going to see these competitions and think, who the hell are those guys? What is going on? And the lion's share of work is done by the instructors that are also teaching on these courses, as well as tactics wing. Uh, in the specialization divisions, whether it be snipers, uh, reconnaissance, and uh, direct fire support weapons, etc. 
you know, as well as uh, tactics for platoons, tactics for company level, etc., as um, those from depot company, it is a massive commitment. And I tell you what, guys, you know, it is a nightmare for those that pull it together. And when they do it right, it's amazing. It should be on TV. Of skills required to be an infantry soldier in today's modern army. The 2022 dog cup has been long in the waiting. Each section has been training for a long time, and this allows that training. Is that a Scottish accent? Am I, am I like stupid? It sounds very Scottish. I mean, I, I don't know, for a Scot to move to Australia seems kind of unlikely too, but I don't. Okay, to clarify, what we've got is a lateral system where those that have made their 20 years normally and made it to the rank of warrant officer, sometimes sergeant, will come from the UK in a lateral transfer scheme, bringing their entire family to become Australian citizens after the mandatory retirement age of 20 years in the UK army, uh, serving the king now, formerly the queen, and then they come over and they take off with either the rank they were at or the rank below. So warrant officers will often go to sergeant, and this is to make sure they're not a fagazi, a fake diamond, and they normally get posted to the School of Infantry, where they will instruct for several years to make sure they're also teaching Australian doctrine, not UK, which has some differences. So don't be surprised when you actually hear it, and they normally are very, very professional. I mean, hey, it looks warmer at least, so there's that. Pays okay. a lot more too. Uh, that kind of threw me off. Unless like Australia has like similar accents. To come to fruition. The Dog Cup is a prestigious event. This sees a section training year after year to compete. It gives them bragging rights against nice. their other units. It's a proud, prestigious moment. Sick. Each section member will be beaming with proud just to be selected to compete in the Dog Cup. The Hell yeah, compete. okay. Damn, he's passionate about this. It is pretty cool to like be be there representing. I think they're saying they're representing their battalion. Being there representing that, it, it means a big deal. Like usually there's a lot of train up and maybe even like some sort of tryouts. Um, I know generally speaking, you kind of like stack the section. So it, it won't necessarily be an organic section like the people that you normally operate with. Sometimes, you know, they'll, they'll stack it up. That's not how we did it. Um, so, you know, we, we weren't cheating or anything. I, I think that's still kind of cheating a bit. <laughs> but sometimes, yeah, the battalions might just like get all their best people and kind of throw them together. But it's definitely... It happens, team. There used to be a lot of stacking, but then there was times where they'd allocate and say the Duke of Gloucester Cup must come from Bravo Company, must come from Charlie Company. And then from there, what they might make is two sections, an A team and a B team, with the A team being the only team plus a reserve maybe that goes down to the School of Infantry to compete. You lose a member, you lose a member. If you take the wrong people, remember you travel at the speed of the slowest, of the fattest. So you need to make sure your worst person is better than every other section's worst person. That's how you win. That's simple mathematics. If you say you can do it and you can't, your reputation will be made when you return back to the battalion. Believe me, it can make or break you. Something cool to at least represent your battalion for something like this. Competitors will then go forward and compete against international armies in the UK mm. and the Cambrian Patrol. To have <coughs> the ability to go to the UK and compete internationally, having completed and won the Dog Cup, is an achievement that only a few can talk about. Oh, hell yeah. Nice, are they doing force on force? Look like it. Dude, their gear is so sick. The Australian infantry get they get it right, man. Thanks, man. Semper Fi. Oh, except for those gas masks. I don't know about those. <laughs> nice. Oh, okay. Well, at least those guys are kind of lucky because they were the first ones doing it. It looks like everybody else kind of has to go through all this kind of crummy. That sandpit team is like Kentucky Fried Soldier. You'll do a lot of your uh, warm-ups there, okay? It'll also be where you can do some standalone PT there to add that resistance when you're within your equipment, but also deny you the chance of injuring yourself. It will get into everything. It will steal your nipples from your body. Chances are it's freezing cold at the moment. It has been uh, absolutely pissing down, and they're going to get on the traverse rope, and that will be the culminating point where your nipples 
go left and right and fall off. You know, it is terrible. If you don't think you can get fatigued in sand, believe me, every gym should have a sand pit if you want to see true bloody endurance training or vomit mum and dad spaghetti on your shirt already. If you go to School of Infantry, you're going to see it. You're going to see it on the drive-in and you're going to see it real soon. It's up, but for them, it's yeah, you know, nice and flat at least. <laughs> and this, I thought this was kind of similar, or at least reminiscent of what we see with the uh, commando test, uh, but maybe, maybe not. At least they're not underwater, which definitely makes the difference. Yeah, dude, the Australian infantry—they have like some freaking awesome, awesome gear. So on arrival to the School of Infantry here in Signalton, the sections are met with shock and awe. They'll have an opening address where they'll meet the SI and myself, the Wing Star Major. Hmm. Then straight into a rigorous kit check prior to conducting battle preparation. From that moment on, the sections are tactical and being watched he by all happy. the directing staff who will score them accordingly as they progress through the competition. Oh, so it looks like they're checking, are they checking the packing list as well? That's something that happens a lot. It's like you're supposed to show up with a certain amount of items or very specific items and you get dinged like right away if you're missing that stuff. I know we, we got dinged hard because like, I don't know. I was just, I was, I was a pretty, I was a very junior squad leader. At least I was a very junior sergeant. I had been a squad leader for a bit, but we were missing some things and it was just so dumb. It's like, dude, I know we checked that like yesterday or whatever, and somehow stuff just disappears. Competition. Kit checks are extremely important. Load lists, because there is the things that are important to you, but there's the things that are important to the mission. And we need to assume that we're capable of able to do everything, including casualty uh, evacuation, navigation, um, cutting through jungles, etc. We need to have everything, the amount of water that is required, okay? Uh, sleeping equipment, uh, able to operate in hot or cold environments, taking into account you can take off to, in a hot environment and land in a cold. This is indicative to life in the battalion, going on operations, going on special forces, and it's attention to detail. <laughs> the first day we go into the live firing phase. This sees the sections compete against each other and a number of live firing exercises. The sections are put under extreme nice. pressure and that they can see each other potentially see how well they are doing. It's important that the sections and indeed the individuals are able to use their weapon systems accurately and effectively throughout the entire competition. Word. Good test. For sure, you, you definitely they need to be effective the with the weapon. conduct the enhanced combat shooting phase. It starts off with a 3.2 kilometer best effort run and then... The 3.2 kilometer, I believe, is the hardest physical test that you can do as an infantry soldier. It's somewhere between sprinting, somewhere between uh, endurance, morale, psychology, but it's also carrying all of your equipment. But there's no equity and diversity. Some are carrying guns. Some are carrying grenade launchers. Some are carrying assault rifles. You know, And you can't just teamwork, give me the gun, although that happened on mine, you know, on my section, we had two people go to SASR, Special Air Service, premium, uh, tier one, special forces, just after this. Now, one of them still there, one was crippled. Okay, guys, the level of fitness required to run as a team for 3.2, followed up by the dexterity, the controlled breathing, and the live fire shooting that follows is the hardest thing I believe that I've ever done till today. Gives me nightmares. And straight into the shoot. This means that as they arrive at the firing point, the sections have an increased heart rate and are immediately under pressure. They'll no then kidding. conduct the standard shoot by day, then the enhanced combat shooting standard. Whoa, what the heck? What pistol is the Australian Army rocking? The is Browning. <laughs> Could be used to pump it in tent pegs. Damn, everything looks so. I mean, even the holster looks freaking high speed too. Why do they all look like super tall as well? It's kind of weird. But yeah, these guys all look super high speed and they pull out like this dinosaur looking pistol. <laughs> I'm not a fan of infantry carrying pistols. Let's be let's be honest on that one. And I, and I can talk about it all day, you know, but we need to upgrade from the Browning to something like a Sig Sawyer, to something like a Glock, etc., with a higher magazine capacity, more reliability, and something that hasn't basically, you know, kept papers from flying away for the last 50 years. 
<laughs> Is that how they hold the AEGs when they run with them? Yeah. Or the, the whatever they call them. EF88, something like that. Damn. Shooting a saw kneeling is not fun. Dude, they got the shot timers and stuff. This is freaking awesome. And transition drills. Dude, this is my... That road used to be just dirt, rocks. <laughs> You'd be sliding all over the place. People falling over, skinning their knuckles to shit us. Guys, the close fight that's happening here uh, is to train towards fighting in the... Um, uh, the built-up arena, okay, if you're fighting in built-up areas, etc., um, yeah, maybe we need to be careful we don't put too much emphasis on it. Not everything needs to be geared around Ukraine or fighting just in buildings, but this is a test of everything. There we go. My kind of competition, we didn't go this hard when it came to, like, the marksmanship aspect. I wish we did. That's like the bread and butter of infantry. Shoot, move, and communicate, you know? Damn, these guys all look pretty freaking solid, too. Nice, night shooting. Day and night, McDonald's Cup. It's so much fun just shooting with a laser like that. Nice. Dude, reloading at night, too. That is like, they're really like going in depth into like certain things like Okay, shooting is one thing, but shooting in the dark is a whole nother thing. And doing weapon weapon manipulations in the dark is a whole nother thing. I remember like the first time I put on a tourniquet for, for someone when it was like nighttime and I didn't have like any sort of light on me. It was like, it was pretty rough. It was like still within like 20 seconds, which was okay. But yeah, you just like, you realize, damn, this is so much harder when I can't actually see anything. <laughs> From the live firing phase, the sections will then move into the patrol phase. This sees them move from shooting to becoming tactical and operating in different environments under different mm. amounting pressures. Starts Word. off with a night navigation as a section over approximately Ouch. 10 kilometers through the night. This th Team, so they're going to be in marching order for that 10 kilometers the entire night. They didn't sleep in the day before. They're not about to sleep in the day after. And this is not yet considered part of the endurance phase. So when I ask you questions about fitness, this video should tell you as a summary of infantry training, what the fitness level is required and the reason why I say females should not under any circumstance go to an infantry battalion. Because when you see us doing physicality, we don't even class that as endurance. It's just part of the job. Then okay. sees them finish at a start point for the subsequent stand. The <coughs> stand will test different elements and different aspects of conventional fundamental war fighting. Oh, no kidding. That Dude, water wouldn't be warm. The we'll then move on to a major obstacle crossing. This sees them crossing a large water gap at depth. This not only tests their ability to go through the Sodra process, but also tests their physical and mental endurance getting into cold water is this like a basic skill for australian infantry because i got yes it is another reason why you need to be able to swim because you won't be given a life jacket when you're on operations when you do it you won't be given a life jacket when you do um a, a crossing of a river on operations at all including in training i gotta say it is not a basic skill for like marine or army infantry how does that occur? You're Marines. You're a waterborne infantry force. And this isn't a basic skill. When I went to Hawaii, we got dropped out 500 meters plus and we had to swim to shore. We did have life jackets on, but you saw how quickly everyone hung around the fat guy in case the sharks came. Depending on the unit, of course, but I mean, I've been to a few different units in a bunch of different parts of the US and we didn't train this as like a standard. It's not like even when you're going through like the expert soldier badge or the expert, oh gross, why did I say that first? Even when you're going for the expert infantry badge, like they're not training anything that advanced. So that's pretty cool that they're implementing 
something that kind of tricky or at least logistically tricky into something like this. Then on the morning the Sorry to disturb him again. Australians don't go into specializations like the US Marines, US Army does. In the suite of training for low level, not low level, for light infantry, which means we can adapt to uh, naval, we can be in helos, we can be in armor, we can be dismounted, we can do all of those things in one day. So we have to be the jack of all trades, we have to be able to do everything and compete at a high level at all things. Okay? We sub, we are different. We started to know it was two degrees, so this would have been a shock for anybody. <laughs> Ouch. From the major obstacle crossing, the sections will move to the BCP. The BCP sounds extremely simple. However, this has layers of complexity. The section commander and the section Yo, for real. will need to go through and think about ethical decision making. They will have to positively identify the enemy, who may or may not be dressed in civilian attire. This makes it extremely difficult. They'll have to control the crowd and potentially have to go through prison of a wardrobe. Dude, and again, this is something that I got experience with, but that's because I was in like, I did some stuff in, you know, Marine Corps security forces. And then from there, I got to go into more like the CQB school oriented stuff. So we got to do a lot more training as far as like building up some of these like ad hoc positions, setting up these, this Constantiner wire, actually doing these vehicle control points. And it's pretty tricky to like understand how to actually you know, have a chain of custody with all these people, how to separate them, how to properly search them. For a just like a standard infantryman, that is asking a lot to have like all these different tasks in one sort of event like this. Infantry is not for dummies. Normally the private soldier will be the tip of the spear that is the first one to come into contact with a civilian, with a threat, with someone who's injured, with some complexity, which means he has to be able to verbally articulate, but also physically make a decision up to two ranks above his pay grade to be able to get a positive resolution or at least a pause on the situation until someone higher can come over and take over the jurisdiction of that situation. They do a great job. Test hard and they will pass the test. That's insane. That is really, really cool, though. <coughs> nice. The the section of the Reaching. Day is a section attack. This is the bread and butter for any infantry soldier. This yes, season conduct is. a section attack over undulating complex. Through the section attack, they will meet up against an adverse enemy and have to fight their way through, using a number nice. of different assets that are available to them. The sections will be of exposed course. to CBRN environment. This will see them don Jeez. the respirators and then have... See, they're making sure they've got gas masks on so they don't inhale gay smoke. ...to conduct a casual evacuation under pressure and whilst wearing their CBRN PPE. Damn, dude, seriously? First of all, it's pretty cool that they got all the smoke grenades, <clears> but on that sucks. Attacks, the sections will move to an area where they will be confronted by a mass casualty situation. Oh, this will dude. see them having to deal with a number of casualties with differing injuries. It's important that the section commander at this time remains cool, calm and controls his... Again, none of this comes under the fitness spectrum. It comes under endurance, sure. Okay, It comes under stoicism. It comes under capability. Remember, the role of the infantry is to seek out and close the enemy, to kill or capture him, to seize and hold ground, to repel attack by day or night, regardless of season, weather or terrain. So wrapped up in that, the role of the infantry is to train for war, the hardest day, on the worst day. Trips. Yep. This is an uncomfortable... Un oh, no kidding. Yeah, that is definitely a mass casualty. Damn, you got like... A mass casualty can mean... A, a few different things depending on like what your kind of unit is or what your operation or mission is but this is like yeah i don't know there's like what one two there's like at least five maybe like we saw a couple others and yeah with a bunch of different types of injuries i mean hopefully they have all the medical equipment with them because if not then you're kind of screwed right the the cool thing about this is designed to test the commander okay as well as the private soldier so everyone is getting tested on something completely different, but then there'll be an overall summary of did you save the patients? 
Did you have security, which is also a very important situation because removing danger okay, is the most important thing. There. <laughs> wow, that just unlocked a memory. So when we were doing the division squad competition, <laughs> our, uh, our core, our core men, <laughs> Oh man, I need to I need to talk to some of my buddies about this. But our corpsman, he didn't have a litter, specifically a polis litter, which I guess was like a big deal to like, dude, where's the polis litter? So we're trying to like move a casualty and we didn't have this polis litter. It became like a, a meme inside the unit. Uh, it was it was really funny. Now that I, now that I think about it, <laughs> yeah, something like this. You, if you forget like one item, it's like damn. We're gonna we're gonna struggle here. We're gonna struggle a lot. This is an uncomfortable, unfamiliar situation <laughs> for the sections. This will put them clean outside their comfort zone. The next stand the sections will move to is a point target reconnaissance. This sees the sections move silently and stealthily in order to gain information on Damn. enemy movement or indeed enemy base locations. Every it's type of freaking patrol. The sections take the time and invest the time in order to reconnaissance this and gain as much information as possible for subsequent operations. Hmm. Yep. We have two types of patrols, fighting patrols and reconnaissance patrols. One is for gaining information, the other one is for destroying the enemy. And that Team Wendy helmet? They have some nice freaking gear. Nice, okay, here we go. Some force on force. Dude, I love those rifles. If you guys don't, that's fine. Central I'll, I'll love them for you. This season conduct the rural. I want the M4 variant. You know, I love all the the Sig Spear, all the new weapons you've got. You know, it's always the grass is greener, I guess. To urban transition and then operate in the complex environment. Hmm. Word, dude. This, Word. this is like more of the fun part. But you can get like, you get lit up in a freaking room, and that's it game over that was an awkward ram right there <laughs> oh my gosh we saw this before in the school country of the dog cup 2022 sees a section going to separate area ambushes they will be in these ambushes for a period of time anywhere from five to ten hours that's what we on. So these guys are going to be sighted in an ambush now, extremely pre-fatigued. Okay, and then this is going to be on their discipline. It's going to be on their tactical setup of an ambush. Okay, if they get compromised, zero. And nothing goes to plan. There might be something that occurs that makes you eject from there and do a night movement where all of a sudden you're navigating, okay, to a different location an ERV, emergency rendezvous point, which you haven't already prepared. You know, the DS will have some psychological testing that wrong foots you at every step of the way. Comfortable for them as they're already. I'm guessing they're doing like a forward passage of lines with like their recon elements. <coughs> yes. I imagine this dude isn't organic. He's a role player. Of what they do. But yeah, it's kind of cool to be able to at least like push up and do that kind of coordination like dude what what did you guys see especially this is something that we did a lot with their as, like as a recon element is we would you know scout ahead do like a, a route recon or what have you and then the unit would come after us and we do like a handoff with the commander or what have you saying this is what we saw this is something that's probably going to kind of like funnel your troops or something that might slow you down so things to consider so i think that's what they're doing here but i'm not too sure fatigued. Once the ambush is sprung, they will go through the ambush drill. He doesn't look like he wants to, to be there. An emergency rendezvous point, at which stage they will enter the endurance phase. This will see them move with purpose, covering approximately 50 <laughs> kilometers at speed to test their endurance. Ouch. Did he just say 50 kilometers? Whoo! Th these guys have already been gone for a few days, team. They've already been soaking wet. You know, this is normally at the end of winter when this is run. These guys aren't comfortable, but there's no quitting. There's no falling out. There's nowhere to go. There's no tap. This would hurt. We carry more equipment now than we have carried in the history of infantry. 
stages throughout the endurance That's the broke rangers in the background. Number of items that will make it more difficult for them and put oh, them under course. pressure. Of course. The, <laughs> the most awkward of things the too. Phase sees the sections hit the obstacle course. This is extremely difficult with a number of obstacles throughout. Should take the sections of roughly 25 to 30 minutes to cross this. Not only is this difficult, it is a race against time. This is where the sections <laughs> can make up vital points that may get them over the line to win the dog cup. Word. Nice, okay. So team, the culmination point of their actual uh, endurance phase would have then stopped basically at the briefing ground, I'd imagine, like it did for us at the start of the obstacle course. Our culminating point after our endurance phase was to do hardcore. And that was after three days of train, uh, of already competing. Absolutely heartbreaking to hear what we're about to do was the culminating to all infantry training for their initial employment training that sends them to the battalion. When you go and you first grab the traverse rope, it's about as thick as a donkey's dick, the rope. And you start to question, will my limbs even allow me to lift my body weight with the exhaustion that you have within them? The lack of food, the lack of protein. Your boots are white from the amount of salt that has escaped. You need those electrolytes. Will I cramp? It is terror. Huh. And it's a competition. At least they got to drop the helmets. Helmets are so annoying for this kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, dude. Gritty. Check it out. All the guys going Harsh to 343. Three. You're all doing this. And at this point, you know they have like a bunch of small cuts and stuff all over their head. Right. That is the worst obstacle I've ever been on in my life. If you cherish your ball sack and you haven't had kids yet and you are walking on muddy dirty wet boots over two meters off the ground you know walk across the rungs of this uh what looks like a terrorist bloody monkey bars mate the fear that you have if you slip there's only one thing stopping you and that's your taint or your nuts Whew. i reckon women made this one hands like their hands are jacked up Hell yeah, dude. I love obstacle courses. They're to the very annoying side, with a gun. Actually, this is where I lost my fingernail on the first day. We had like an endurance course, which is like pretty much very, very similar to this. But we had one dude, he had his rifle slung on his back and he like vaulted over the wall because I was kind of like putting my knee up so he could jump on my knee and then get over the wall. But my hand was on the other side of the wall kind of stupid like why, why not just go around the wall yeah it wasn't very realistic of a scenario i guess put my arm around i didn't get uh i didn't get my finger injured i got my nose smashed by <laughs> hopgood who was our two ic going through some nets you know he kicked back with his leg and it smashed me nose look good for the photos but that's it What's his i'm gonna hot drop you into me getting trolled on my youtube channel by a guy found it but I paid for it because when my hand was on the other side of the wall, when he went over, his weapon got like kind of slung forward and the compensator just like ripped my nail off just like that. Just such a clean swipe. And I was like, damn, okay, it's, it's it. going to be that kind of week, huh? You're going to do all of this at the School of Infantry, team. Teamwork. Last man. Hardest job. Damn. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Of course, it's wet too. Oh, dude, that sand getting in your sleeves. That's the worst feeling. Traverse rope. And the, the weapon swinging around like that. It's kind of funny how they're holding like the bottom of the trigger guard area. Women don't apply. That's pretty neat. Oh, damn. Nice task. Dude, that's gotta suck with freaking kid on. <laughs> oh, dude. You'll notice that um, US traditionally don't actually do their obstacle courses with their equipment. 
Okay, Australians, for some reason, we do. Um, how much equipment gets broken, how many weapons get uh, broken on obstacle courses. I wish it just came down to the section, make it speed, make it teamwork, and make the time count. I reckon that's what it should be. They all, they all just have like a layer of filth on them. <laughs> Badass. <coughs> Dude, there's so many staff. So many, holy cow. That water is freezing. It's just like, might be like the culminating event, so it might make sense. <laughs> there you go. Yep, okay, Excellent. hell yeah. One area. Makes sense where there's so many people kind of watching that final yeah. thing. What, two area, second to none. <laughs> the contrast of the, the guide ons with how dirty they are. Dude, that's sick. Cool hats. Well done, team. That's my old boss. I would also like to comment quickly on the performance of all of our competitors over the last six days. From their arrival, from the very first minute they got here and throughout the entire competition, we have honestly been nice. overwhelmed by the enthusiasm, the professionalism, the resilience, and the sheer determination that has been on display all week by all sections. Who's gonna These win? These soldiers represent Dude. the very best that in the was Royal freaking Australian intense. Regiment. And we thank you all for putting it all on the line and representing your battalions at such a high standard. There it is. Oh, yeah, the dude. final placings of the 2022 Duke of Gloucester Cup oh, dude. are as follows. In seventh place, 8-9 RAR. In sixth place, 6 RAR. In fifth place, oh, my gosh, that's like... RAR. In fourth place, 5 RAR. The heart's Ooh. pumping In when you're hearing place, that. In third place, 2 RAR. Come on! Runners up. For the Duke of Gloucester Cup, seven RAR, and the winners of the 2022 Duke of Gloucester Cup, oh, three RAR. Yeah, yeah. Being able to. Not I wonder only if they knew beforehand. Team, I'm making this on the 17th, you know, of April. The 24th of April, the day before Anzac Day, is the Battle of Capion. Three RARs um, uh, battle on it, and they were fighting beside the Marines in Korea. So amazing coincidence of this one. Well done, three area. Well done. And like I know when we did it, we didn't find out until like they were doing that, like actually calling it off. Which you, you kind of have like a general idea, but for us, like we. Were okay, team. Well, let's call it there. It's been a long video. I just want to say thank you to Combat Arms Channel, and it was great to see how humble he was. Um, I've watched a lot of his videos. I suggest you watch a lot of his videos. He's got a lot of subscribers for a goddamn good reason. He was just speaking about my backyard this time in the Duke of Gloucester Cup. One day, this is something that you can have as a pinnacle. We can't afford for all of our best soldiers to go to commandos. Okay, We can't afford for all of our best soldiers to go to SASR because that takes away our leadership and prevents us from being Premier Battalions within the Premier Regiment. We've only got one, the Royal Australian Regiment, God Save the King. Make sure you like and subscribe. And let me know in comments, have you been in the Duke of Gloucester Cup or would you like to do it? That's all from me. See you later. Enjoy the day. Say good day to your mum and let's celebrate Anzac Day by lifting a glass and remembering a name. See you later, team.